Once again, Jane Castor has decided to waste our time with another week of meaningless changes. This past Thursday, she held a press conference describing suggestions for the Community Review Board. Now, if you guys haven't seen my last post, check it out. I listed all of those changes, and as you probably have already seen, they are again, meaningless. I mean, the community of Reboard still has no real power other than the power of suggestion. And how far does that really go to a police department that is already biased and thinks they're in the right? I want to thank everybody who commented and expressed how they felt about these changes. I'm with you guys. Like every comment I read through, I agree with a hundred percent. It's window dressing. It's basically a way for her to act like she's making changes when really we see right through that bullshit and she's not doing anything that we asked for. She's not addressing anything that we asked for. It's just ways for her to kind of pull a fast one on people that don't really pay attention as thoroughly as, you know, this community does. That being said, you know, I could go into depth about each one of these changes, but I feel like that would be a waste of our time. Our demands aren't met and they're on her desk and she knows what they are. So she needs to stop playing dumb and respond to our demands because we're not going to stop. Monday, we're starting the week off strong with our first protest of the week. I'm sure there'll be many more after that. Um, we're not stopping. We're going hard. We took a, we took a little step back this past week um, to kind of work behind the scenes, but don't get it twisted. We are, we're going strong as ever. This movement is it's not a moment, it's a movement, and it's gonna last until we see real change. On to the next topic. Now, I know some of you guys have expressed some outrage about the Mayor's Community Task Force on policing, how it's you know not open to the public, not even open to the media at that, and I'm here because I have a little bit of some inside scoop. I was able to talk to some members who were able to go to the meeting this past Saturday. It was their second meeting, and I was hoping that they would, you know, change things up and address the fact that it was basically just a conversation workshop last time, but it was the same damn thing. I, I'm beginning to believe that this whole community task force was not the mayor's idea to address changes. It was conceived out of the USF's criminology department. This is one big research project. And Castor claims that she'll take what she learns from this um, workshop and enact some policy changes, but we we know how that story goes. And um, basically what they did in this workshop is they met online this time through a Zoom meeting. It is recorded, so it's up to them whether or not they want to release that recording, but they claim that, you know, under the uh, sunshine law that they don't have to release this meeting because it's not technically... Uh, local government meeting and it's uh, of USF's uh, possession. USF being a public university using our tax dollars, they should be able to release this information to us freely, yet it's all behind the scenes and that's a problem within itself. But again, I'll tell you guys exactly what went on. They met up as you know one big group and then they went into breakout rooms. Those breakout rooms consisting of um, different community leaders as well as police officers and they were given a list of questions to discuss and they just went back and forth and discussed the questions again no real changes just basically a conversation as frustrating as it is to you know have a whole bunch of these community forums with seemingly zero results coming out of them i need us to continue to have a seat at the table to have our voices heard um, so that these people can be called out when needed. That being said, Dugan has created another community workshop. It's called Fair and Impartial Policing Community Workshop. And they're holding that on July 22nd um, from 5.30 to 9.30. And you can apply to be on that. I will put details of that in the description of this video. So please, please, please apply to be a part of that. Now the hard part. Um, so... I wanted to end this weekly update and conversation with some upsetting news, but I think it's important for you guys to hear because I'm tired of, you know, we the people electing people into office who don't reflect us. And it's important for us to know who we are voting for. 
That being said, I was uh, I attended a, a Zoom call that involved some community local community activists and leaders. And one of the leaders, well respected in this community, made it a point to let us know that he heard something very upsetting from someone who was running for Hillsborough County Commissioner um, for District 3. Now I'm about to tell you what this person said and I want you to take with a grain of salt and make your own judgments um, because I usually don't like to go off of speculation um, but I don't want this to get swept under the rug. And the person that I heard it from doesn't really have a reason to lie. I mean, they're not running for Hillsborough County Commissioner um, so I don't know why they would say this if it wasn't true. But on the Zoom call, they said they heard from this person's mouth say, quote, if the Klan marched against the gays, I would be leading the charge. I know, I, I couldn't believe it either when I heard it, but this is the reality of the situation and it's time for us to face that reality. We have to get to know our candidates. You know, and you know, me personally, I prefer the person I'm voting for to reflect me, um, to reflect the people, a beautiful, diverse group of people who, you know, stand for inclusion, equality, acceptance. We don't have time to play games anymore with these, you know, on the fence candidates or even worse, homophobic candidates. I mean, look where we're at now. We're constantly trying to beg our local officials to see things the way that we see things, and they just don't because they're not us, you know? So it's time for us to vote all these, you know, old ideas out. These people who are holding on to these old ideas um, have to leave because this is a revolution, and, you know, we need the people making these important decisions to reflect who we are. And last time I checked, this person that said this egregious comment was leading in the polls and if you guys don't want this person to win um i encourage you to please cast your vote to another person i personally am probably gonna um have my vote with sky white um i haven't finished all of my research on the candidates yet but she so far is a standout candidate to me again make your own decision so we'll go ahead and conclude with that. I want you guys this upcoming week to make it to as many protests as possible. Show up, show out. Um, obviously go to the community meetings as well. There's a CRA meeting this Thursday, July 23rd, and it's virtual. It starts at 9 a.m. There's also a citizens advisory meeting, also virtual. Um, that's going to be on Friday, July 24th. Make sure you guys submit your public comments ahead of time. I'll probably post something to remind you guys about, you know, these meetings, but let's continue to stay educated, continue to show up and keep pushing.